morning and praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to the Bread of Life Missionary Baptist Church located at 1924 West 63rd Street, Chicago, Illinois, where Dr. David L. Sutton is our pastor. We are streaming live via Facebook and are excited to connect with you. Welcome visitors and thank you for joining us. It is our prayer that you are uplifted during worship and may your life never be the same because God is good. Announcements, Sunday, July 5th, 2020. Everyone born in the month of July, post some thumbs up as we say happy birthday to each of you. All couples celebrating a wedding anniversary this month, post some hearts as we wish you a happy anniversary. Co-chairs Sister Shirley Betts and First Lady Samella Sutton sends a special thanks to our guest speaker, Minister Valerie Houston of New Beginnings Church of Chicago for enlightening us on how to conquer our giants and to her sister, Veronica Houston, for blessing us with a beautiful sermonic solo that prepared our hearts to receive the Word of God. And to the 2020 Women's Day team, sisters Teresa Gray and Lily Harris, the Women's Day Praise Team, Evangelist Tracy McFadden, Sister Erica Robinson, First Lady Samella Sutton, and Tiffany Warner, and to our tech team, Christopher Amiralari, Davia Freeman, and Tori Sutton. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In lieu of following COVID-19 precautionary measures, all on-site services and meetings are canceled until further notice. To stay abreast of current guidelines concerning COVID-19, go to chicago.gov forward slash coronavirus. Bread of Life Church is exercising faith over fear through wisdom. Thus, we are conducting Sunday school, worship service, and all Bible study classes on Facebook Live and via conference call. Adult Sunday school participants dial 213-493-0606, then enter access code 595-844-455 four five five at nine o'clock a.m. each Sunday and use the same conference call information for Sunday morning 1050 a.m. worship and on Wednesdays for 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Bible study. Youth Sunday School participants dial 224-501-3412 then enter access code 252-588 517 at 9 o'clock a.m. each Sunday. Worship service is streamed each Sunday at 10.50 a.m. via Facebook Live on the Bread of Life Facebook page. Tithing and giving options are available by texting BOL Chicago to 77977 on your cell phone or online at pushpay.com. You may also send your tithes and offering to the church via U.S. mail to Bread of Life Church, 1924 West 63rd Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60636. If you have a prayer request or wish to join this church, dial 773-778-4121. If you are worshiping with us via Facebook Live, please share the service with family and friends and share your prayer request in the comment section of Bread of Life's Facebook page. A virtual Facebook Live event presents a Youth Awakening concert Friday, July 10th at 7 p.m. sponsored by Illinois Baptist State Association featuring recording artist Philip Allens and Autry Watkins, lead pastor of Transformation Church of South Chicago Heights, Illinois. All youth that are interested, please look for an update on the church page as to how to participate later this week. 
Black Church Life Conference will be conducted virtually this year from July 20th through July 24th. To register for the free conference, go to www.lifeway.com forward slash Black Church Life. For further details, contact Sister Judy Hambrick at 312-287-0320. On Sunday, August 2nd at 10.50 a.m., we will celebrate the under-shepherd of this house, Dr. David L. Sutton, 11th year anniversary. The theme is All In, John 6, 60 through 68. Our guest speaker is Bishop Anthony Harmon of New Life Celebration Church of God in Dalton, Illinois. It is now time for our offering. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Honor the Lord with thy wealth and with the first fruits of all your crops. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I would not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive it. Give, and he'll give it back to you. Press down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. For God loves a cheerful giver.
bless the Lord for this the day that the Lord hath made. Therefore, we will what? Rejoice and be glad. And I thank God. Anybody thankful to this morning? Come on, bless the Lord if you are thankful. You're just glad to be able to see another day. It may not be a perfect day, but it's a good day. Any day above ground I heard is a good day. So come on, bless the Lord with me. We praise God. We bless the Lord. It's a special occasion as we think about think about 4th of July, the birth of our country. So we bless the Lord. Come on, bless, bless the Lord right now. We, we praise Him for uh, the opportunity just to experience freedom, although we know the country is not quite there for all of us. But we bless the Lord for freedom in Him. Anybody believe that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there's freedom. And so we praise God for that too. Come on, praise God. And we thank God for a wonderful month of June, just great Bible studies throughout the month and great worship experiences through uh, virtual allergy. And we thank God for all those who brought the Word in such a powerful way. I think about uh, Reverend McFadden bringing the word in June. We think about uh, um, Evangelist uh, McFadden, how she brought the word. And then we think about Minister Valerie Houston for Women's Day. Come on, bless the Lord. We truly are blessed. I just don't want us to take that for granted. Come on, praise God. And I truly uh, bless the Lord personally as I think about 11 years ago, this was my first Sunday preaching as you all's pastor, as Brother Life pastor, serving as your leader for 11 years. I truly count that a privilege. Come on, give God some praise for us being on this journey uh, together. And I cannot uh, celebrate without thinking about those whose shoulders I'm standing on. So I think about Pastor Arthur Porter Jr., who's going home to be with the Lord, the first pastor of Brother Life, and then also Pastor Leon Johnson, uh, who went into retirement in 2007, uh, December of 2007, and then came out of retirement, and now he's pastoring in Florida. So I thank God for those two men of God and their families, the first ladies. Oh, come on, come on, come on, give God some praise. We thank God for how he has been with us for almost 49 years. And the Lord gave me the privilege of serving you in 11 of those years. So we look forward to the great things that God has in store for us in the future. So let us look to the Lord in prayer and just, uh, uh, just believe God to continue to speak as we know he always does. Oh Lord, how we thank you, how we praise you, how we bless you. There's truly no one like you. And as I reflect on all that you have done for me, for my family, for the church that I serve, uh, for the people who serve here in the community of West Inglewood. Lord, there was nobody but you who have kept us for these many years. And it be you that will take us all the way through to the very end. Believe that you who started or began a good work will finish it unto the day of Christ Jesus. So now, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer, that our God's people say, Amen. And so we want to go into the word, uh, Psalms 141. Psalms 141. And I just want to read that whole psalm. It is uh, 10 verses, 10 verses. And so follow me in, in Psalms 141, verses 1 through 10. And it reads as follows. I call to you, Lord, come quickly, hasten to me. Hear me when I call to you. May my prayer be set before you like incense. Uh, may the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart be drawn to what is evil so that I take part in wicked deeds along with those who are evil doers. Do not let me eat their delicacies. Uh, let a righteous man strike me. That is a kindness. Let him rebuke me. That is oil on my head. Uh, my head will not refuse it. For my prayer, prayer will still be against the deeds of the evildoers. Their rulers will be thrown down from the cliffs. And the wicked will learn 
that my words were well spoken. They will say as one plows and breaks up the earth, so our bones have been scattered at the mouth of the grave. But my eyes are fixed on you, sovereign Lord, and you I take refuge. Do not give me over to death. Keep me. Keep me safe from the traps set by evildoers, from the snares they have laid for me. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass by in safety. Hear my prayers, O oh Lord. Here in this text, it's really, that's the simple title. You can't get any simpler than that because that's how he starts off. He's, he's uh, petitioning God. Uh, uh, soliciting God to uh, hear his prayer. He desired for his prayers to be heard. And I know you all have that same desire that uh, God would hear our prayers. Uh, it is not certain what time period David's life was uh, in when he wrote this particular psalm. I have read that it could possibly be during the time of David running from King Saul, who was very jealous of David, therefore he desired to kill him. I also read that he could have been, uh, it could have been written during the time of David's son Absalom, who tried to take his throne. Whatever the time, all we know is the fact that he was in great distress and his prayer to God was urgent. Here you see where he's he 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 is uh, desperate, and you see the desperation in his prayer, and he's he's praying for God to show up now. He's screaming help. Literally, that's what he's screaming out. Uh, that's what this uh, uh, this particular verse uh, speaks of as relates to him praying. Anybody ever pray like that where you are under distress? Uh, he was under uh, 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 I mean, just um, a real challenging situation where even your life was at stake. And, and I know someone that what I'm talking about where sometimes it happens so fast you just call on Jesus. Jesus! Uh, you can practice that now because I guarantee you, you're going to have times in your life where the troubles come so fast that you pray with desperation and you don't have time to be cute. You don't have time to go through all the various verses of the Bible. Uh, you just scream out, help! I'm sure someone can testify to that even now as we think about what we're going through because what David dealt with was really going through a very hostile environment. A hostile environment so bad that perhaps even his life was in danger. And even when I think about nowadays and what we're going through, we are in a hostile environment. When we think about COVID-19 and how it is steadily increasing uh, around us, and I don't care what they say about Mayor uh, Lightfoot and uh, our governor, Governor Prisser, I bless the Lord for them because even though the numbers are increasing all around, us, the numbers are steadily decreasing right here in the state of Illinois. So we thank God for those who are wearing masks, despite what we're hearing from various people across the country who refuse to wear masks, perhaps because they are in denial that we are in a hostile environment where it is causing us to be in the place of desperation. When I think about even the racial injustices that's occurring in our land, we don't have to go through all the various details. We, we've seen that in the past and in the month of June of the, the marches and, and unfortunately the, uh, the looting uh, uh, due to abuse of power that has been occurring in the lives of African Americans for over 400 years. And that's why we emphasize that black lives matter. When we think about even the violence that's occurring, even from our own people here in the city of Chicago and how our children are, are dying to uh, 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 someone being careless with, with, with gunfire and always end up shooting is always wrong unless it's in self-defense, defense of innocent lives. Uh, but uh, when it comes to people who shoot, shooting, they don't even know how to shoot. They always seem to shoot 
uh, the persons who are our bystanders and what's happening in our community are people who are dying innocently, who have nothing to do with what's going on, and unfortunately, even our children are suffering and dying from the violence that's occurring. And, and I don't know about you, but it's causing me to say, help! Help, Lord, we are in, in desperation. And even as we think about uh, the economy and, and the unemployment, uh, how it goes up and down, and there's a fear that the pandemic will cause the, the bottom to drop off, and, and we fall into recession, or God forbid, depression. And, and so there's this fear that is occurring, and it is affecting our lives in so many ways, causing us to be in quarantine and bored to death, suffering from cabin fever, online, uh, watching Netflix, uh, 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 any type of video streaming to keep our minds off, off of what's going on, but you only watch that stuff so much. And so when you start thinking about what's going on around you, depression sets in, hopelessness sets in, and marriages begin to get stressed out, and, and families begin to uh, get stressed out, and, and so you start to see fighting and, and more domestic violence, and, and people becoming more destructive towards one another, and even self-destructive towards themselves as it relates to abuse and, and addictions. And I don't know about you, but I'm here to cry out, help! This is what King David is dealing with. He's, he's struggling uh, because he's in a hostile environment and he, and he feels like the, the walls are closing in on him. Or even in the text, the enemy is coming in on him. How many of y'all know and believe that we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against spiritual wickedness in, in high places? And, and seemingly, it's like the enemy is closing in on us and, and you feel so powerless. And, but I know someone who can fight our battles. Anybody believe that Christ is able to not only uh, 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 take upon our enemies, but defeat our enemies. As a matter of fact, he says that he has overcome the world. So therefore, we must call on him and believe him to fight our battles. If you believe that, come on, bless the Lord. If you don't believe that, then he won't call for help. You try to fight in your own strength, but I know that there's nothing we can do in our own strength, but we can do all things through Christ who infuses us with his strength. And, and David, he knew this in the text. And so you see his prayer broken down in verse 2 where he says, my, my prayer may be set before you like incense. Uh, may the lifting up my, of my hands be like uh, the evening uh, sacrifices. Here he, he start to see where he compares his prayer with the daily rituals of, of the tabernacle. Anybody believe and, and remember in the tabernacle was where the Lord had revealed himself. It was in the tabernacle where you saw uh, the, the priest make sacrifices. You had the place called uh, the uh, holy place. Uh, and then the holy of holies. And again, uh, you had the outer courts. And so it was this was the place where God uh, revealed himself. And so you will see in the text where he speaks of incense. Incense being like prayer and um, um, the even sacrifices being like the uh, 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 lifting up of hands. Uh, so this all has to do with him praying and hoping that God would accept his prayers like he accept the incense that uh, is burned on the altar. Uh, and this is not something that is foreign uh, to us. Scripture talks about this. Uh, in Exodus chapter 30 verses 1 through 10 gives us the context of this. Uh, if you go to verse 6 through 8, he speaks of how uh, they were to put an altar in front of the curtain uh, that shields the Ark of the Covenant of the law before the atonement cover that is over the, the tablets of the covenant law where I will meet with you. So this is stuck right there. I know that's a lot of verses. I mean, that's a lot of information in this one verse. But if you just take a look, you
You will see in Exodus 30, uh, verse 6, he talks about how he expects them to burn this incense uh, uh, before his presence in front of the curtain. It was the curtain that separated the Holy of Holies from the holy place. And it was in the holy place we had the different furnishings. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, bread, where you had the presence of bread, there was an uh, altar there, there was an incense altar, which uh, uh, David is talking about. Anybody remember the lampstand? Uh, you had those various furnishings in the, in the holy place. But in the holy of holies, uh, behind, on the other side of the curtain, you, you had the Ark of the Covenant, and on top was uh, uh, what they call the mercy seat. And, and it was in between the cherubim on top of the mercy seat that God will reveal himself. And he says, listen, I, I want you to make sure that you continue to burn incense in the, in, the, in the morning and in the twilight, in the evening. And the incense really represents uh, God's people uh, standing before him and the curtain. He couldn't go into it the Holy of Holies, but standing outside. You all, you all hear where I'm going? Do you see where I'm going here? And so David takes this and says, our prayers are like the incense that we want to continuously come before you in your presence. Uh, please don't miss this because even in Revelation chapter 8, uh, chapter uh, 8 verses 2 through 4, you see where that, that same principle and thought is continued from the Old Testament to the New Testament, where he says, and I saw seven angels who, who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. And another angel, uh, it says, who had gold and sister, came and stood at the what? At the altar, and he was given much incense to offer uh, with the, listen, the prayers of all God's people. You see that? that that's, that's a continuous principle. It's not just an Old Testament thought. It also goes into the New Testament where God is calling us and challenging us to continue to pray. And he said, listen, your prayers will be like incense that is steadily coming up in my presence. And, and listen, this is the good news. This ought to make you shout. It's the fact of knowing that our prayers are not on the outside of the curtain in the holy place. Now, as a result of Jesus Christ dying on the cross and the veil being written to, that is the curtain from the top to the bottom, the holy of holies has been, what, open to us. So now our incense can begin to, to be in a very holy of holies, in the very presence of God with nothing to block it, nothing to be in between us and the Lord. That's the power of prayer. If you don't believe me, look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, where it says, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. God's throne of grace. God's holy of holies. The very presence where his mercy seat is. He says we can come with confidence knowing that uh, we will receive mercy and find grace, listen, to help us. In the time of need. Don't you ever underestimate what we can do as people of prayer. This is what David, he speaks of in, in Psalms 141 where he says, listen, uh, uh, my prayers are like incense in your presence. My hands is like uh, the evening sacrifices. Where I, I'm steadily praying it before you. See, I always say this that we better pray lest we become prey. We better P R A Y lest we what become P R E Y. I keep saying that over and over again. Why? Because if you continue to try to stop the enemy in your own power, and how I know you're doing that, you know you're doing that if you're trying to deal with the problems and the enemies of this life without prayer. I promise you, you will become a meal. You will become a prey to the enemy. Rather than gaining victory, 
Daniel, who was a fighter, he's no punk. He understand how uh, uh, he, he must be a warrior as a king, but he also knows that he is not the king of kings, that he's to get power from the king to give him authority as king. And so we, as a people of God, we find our authority also in him, and it only comes through prayer, praying in the name of Jesus. What if we continue to pray? What if we got together, I prayed on a consistent basis, and we start offering up our prayers like incense. You all know that incense, it, it changes the atmosphere. It literally does. There's something about the, the, the incense that whatever uh, room you walk into, if that incense is burning, you start like, wow, what is this? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Many of us have incense to cover up other smells. We won't go there. But incense sets the atmosphere. And prayer, you all know that prayer can change the atmosphere. It's hard to have a bad attitude in the midst of some praying people. It's hard for the devil to reign or to wreak havoc in the midst of, of people who are praying. Are there any prayer warriors out there? We got to be in prayer, especially during times such as, as these. What if we got together? Anybody believe that? No, that when we are praying and, 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 and the atmosphere starts to change, that nobody can walk out of a place the same way they came in. That's what prayer does. People who are down and out will walk out with their heads up. People who will walk in with a sickness will walk out with healing. People who have been dealing with uh, all types of trials and tribulations, not having peace, will walk out with peace. Anybody experience that? Come on. I need you to make some noise. Write something out there on Facebook Live. Uh, text somebody and just tell them that prayer changes things. Uh, prayer changes the atmosphere. Prayer works because we serve a God who is more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly than we can ever ask or think. This is what David believes and, and I just believe that I'm in the midst of people who believe like David. What if we continue to pray together uh, where we get on phone conference and we pray. We get on Zoom <laughs> and we pray. Uh, we get on Microsoft Teams and, and, and pray. And we live and pray. Whatever social media outlet and just pray and I promise you God will show up. David, he understands this. And, and while many Christians today might pray with their heads bowed and their hands folded, and, 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 and that's, that's just fine. I've prayed like that many times. But the people in, in David's day oftentimes pray with their eyes open and their hands lifted up towards the heaven. Uh, it, was, it was the raising of the hands and, 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 and the uh, eyes looking up to the hills. You all know where I'm going. By which they, it was a worshipful experience is what I'm trying to say. Now, they, they, they didn't just go through the rituals. Uh, they was looking to meet with God. And you never come into the presence of God without praise for God, without worship towards God. And this is what David is speaking of. He's speaking of being active in prayer. You don't have to always have your eyes closed and, and your, your hands up to your mouth. I know that's what they taught us as children. But what David is saying is being active in your prayer. Be, may, may there be some movement in your prayer. Uh, there may, may there be some, some, some action with your hands and, and with your feet. And as you, as you go into the presence of God, and I promise you, God will show up wherever you are. This is what David is talking about because he saw prayer as being worship. So you see here the text just a little bit uh, further where he goes on uh, to speak of uh, some prayer requests. Uh, he, he has some specific prayer requests here in the text that I want to move through. Uh, not too swiftly, but I, I want to keep it moving so you all can continue to, to, to study this word even after I'm finished preaching on the word. And here you see in uh, uh, Psalms 141, and you see verse 3 
where he says, set a guard over my tongue. Lord, keep watch over the door of my lips. This is interesting here. You would think that he would be praying against his enemies. No, because that's why he's praying for help. You would think he would be praying, Lord, get those guys. He's not even, he, he's not even dealing with them yet. He's praying for himself. This is really, I, I love this. I, I think this is really a, a, a learning experience for us all when it comes to uh, hostile situations, when it comes to the enemy coming at us and we have to scream for help to start to pray for ourselves in the midst of this hostile environment because stress has a way of bringing out what's within. And that, and he understands his, his tendency, his inclination, his proclivity uh, to talk outside of his mouth or talk outside of himself <laughs> as it relates to dealing with stressful situations. He says, set a guard over my mouth, oh Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Because you know, when people are coming at us, what's the first thing we do? We're going to talk some stuff. Yes, yeah, so y'all, we're going to come at them strong. Even if we scared to death, we're going to try to bluff our way out. Anybody know about that? Where you were scared to death, and you said, well, listen, if I just talk my way out of it, maybe I can get a strong enough bluff and then leave me alone. <laughs> and here, David says, look, I can't depend upon my tongue. I can't depend upon my mouth because there are things that may come out of my mouth that may not be helpful. And listen, he's very specific in his request. He says, set a guard over my mouth. That is, put, literally, he's saying, put a a soldier, a guard in front of my mouth. And listen, this is what's so funny. Uh, he talks about guarding it from things uh, coming out rather than things going in. That's interesting here because you all know uh, that uh, you all heard that saying, uh, loose lips, <laughs> sink ships. Anybody know about those ships? Relationships, companionships, Marriage ships, I made up a word there. Marriage ships, I made it just like that. Uh, partnerships, <laughs> fellowships, uh, and guess what? Even worship, where you are, are, are understanding that uh, uh, there's power in the tongue. James talks about that uh, power of life or death, and, and he prayed about his mouth. When was the last time you prayed about your mouth? David, he prays about his mouth and, and what may come out of his mouth. And uh, he's praying this because he doesn't want to say something that he will later regret. Uh, 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 God will, will, will guard his mouth. And, and then it says, keep watch over the door of my mouth. So really, it's this. Say, guard over my mouth. Uh, put a guard right there in front. In other words, Lord, take control of my tongue. Because you all know, we all know that James says that uh, no one can control the tongue. We control all kinds of animals and, and ships. You all know that text over there in James chapter 3. But then he asks the question, who can tame the tongue? You can, I can, but God can. And it happens in prayer. Can I say this? One's control of their own tongue can be a reflection of how strong a person's prayer life is. Oh, don't miss that. Many times uh, 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 your, your, your tongue can tell on you. It can tell what's going on in the heart. And we're going to get to that because he prays about the heart. And, and listen, uh, uh, I know without a shadow of a doubt that when you are in a stressful or emotional state or in the, in the midst of fear, we start to talk it, baby. We get to talking and, and, and listen, uh, we know there are many things we have said in the past that if we can take it back, we would. But you all know that once it comes out, there's no way you can bring it back in. And so David, he, he prays about the tongue. You know, we all know about the things we struggle with as it relates to tongue, lying, gossiping. Can we talk about cursing? Lord have mercy, Pastor, you're getting all in my business. Talking about one another, uh, all types of negative talk. Uh, we have a struggle with that, which leads to David's next prayer request. He 
understands that the tongue is only a symptom of the real root cause, which is the heart. This is what he says in verse 4. Do not let my heart be drawn to what is evil so that I take part in wicked deeds along with those who are evildoers. Do, do not let me eat their delicacies. Please, please, let's just stop right there. He moves from the tongue to the heart because the tongue and the heart are connected. Anybody remember what Jesus said in Matthew 15, verse 18 uh, through 19, I believe, where he says, but the things that come out of a person's mouth comes from the what? Heart. These things defile them, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, uh, uh, slander, all types of, of things come from from the heart. David moved from sin's fruit, which is his mouth, to sin's root, which is the condition of his heart. This is something that I, I think we all need to be aware of. And I know many are thinking, what does this have to do with the enemies coming at us? I think it has a lot to do with uh, his enemies coming at us. Uh, when, the, the, when the enemy is coming at us, it has a way of shaking us up and begin to reveal those things that's on the inside, as I mentioned earlier. When things start to happen, it, 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 it really uh, can bring out, the Bible speaks of testing your faith, it, it really brings out whether or not you're truly a person who trusts in God, a praying person, or you're a person who are like the evildoers. Here, he talks about these evildoers, but before he gets to the evildoers, he starts to really deal with his own heart, and he says, don't let my heart be drawn away. Don't let, don't, don't, he, he's understanding, please. I, I love what he's, he's talking about here. Uh, Jeremiah deals with this. He says, the heart is the sequel above all things beyond cure. Who can understand it? My wife and I talked about this in Wednesday uh, evening uh, prayer. Uh, we talked about this particular lesson uh, and dealing with the heart. And Jeremiah 17, 9 is speaks of uh, uh, Jeremiah being uh, honest with himself that in the heart of humanity that it's not as good as we like to portray it. As a matter of fact, he got some issues. He really speaks here of how it's beyond his control. That means beyond cure. He, he, he wished he could heal this condition, but he doesn't. He, you know, we think coronavirus is bad, and it, yes, it truly is bad, but it's still not as bad as sin. We can't heal ourselves of this virus, this spiritual virus called sin. And we were born with it. Nobody ever had to teach us how to do wrong. We knew how to do wrong all by ourselves. No, we didn't have to go through any school or training. We had to be trained to do good. But we don't have to be trained to do bad. Why? Because it's in the heart. And, 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 and David, he understands this. And listen, I believe he's praying about his heart and dealing with his heart because he knows that the Lord will not hear his prayer if it's full of sin. There's a verse in Psalms 34, uh, verses 15 and 16. It says, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. 16, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And what I mean by doing evil is, is, is what he means is continuously doing evil without any remorse, without any repentance. He's, he's speaking of, Lord, I know you see my heart. And we have to understand that. I talked about that on last Wednesday, that we oftentimes make the Lord just see the outside. We always try to impress people from the outside, but, but it's only what's on the inside that impresses God. Anybody remember the story of Samuel when God had sent him to get King David, to, to pick the king from the house of Jesse? You all remember all the sons were handsome, and these guys were tall, and, and they seemed like they fit the bill uh, physically, and he looked over at Jesse after the 
the Lord had rejected all of his sons and said, do you have any more? He says, well, I have one outside with shepherd, with the sheep. And, and you all know the story. Uh, after he saw David, and the Lord said, that's the man. And, David, and God told Samuel, you all look at the outside, but I see the heart. Perhaps David perhaps was told this story. I don't know, but he knew exactly what to pray about and to pray for. When was the last time you not only prayed about your mouth, but you prayed about your heart? Before David even really get into the deep circumstances around him, the enemies attacking him, he says, Lord, deal with me. Deal with me from the inside out. And he says, listen, don't let me eat the delicacies of them. Now, there's, there's something in me that, that's inclined to want what they have. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> there are things that the evil people have that I like. I may not necessarily like how they got it, but I do like what they have. And, and, and David said, I don't want to be uh, compromised. He said, listen, I'd rather give up the delicacies of the evildoers so that I can have the blessings of you. He realized that he can't have his cake and eat it too. You got to give up something in order to get something. And here in the text, he understands. He said, listen, I can't, I can't be with those, uh, those evildoers. And please understand, I'm not speaking of where you don't have friends who don't know Christ. Uh, the Lord called us to witness to those who don't know him. But to understand that we may be in the world, but we are not what? Of the world. But we go in the opposite direction of them. And I believe that's what David is stating here. That I'm not going to sell my soul to the devil. I'm not going to give up my integrity for a, a, a temporary pleasure. He says, I don't want, I don't want that. And, and, then, and please understand, we, we have to, I love the humility here uh, with David, uh, uh, where he understands that like Eve and Adam, anybody remember Adam and Eve, where they saw the truth and knowledge of good and evil? Anybody remember? It was some ugly tree. Sin never come in its actual essence. It, it comes in a disguise. It, it, where it, 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 it comes like uh, this uh, particular tree in the Garden of Eden where it was uh, good for food. Pleasing to the eye. And it was desirable for gaining wisdom. Out of these, they looked and they saw. They was like, man, that looked good. And sin can draw us. And we have to understand that about ourselves. And why am I emphasizing this? We want to be careful that we do not come to the presence of God with self-righteous attitudes. Anybody remember the prayer of uh, the Pharisee in Luke 18, verses 9 through 14? I don't have time to go there. You have to read it yourself. But here in that text, uh, uh, Jesus compared the prayer of a tax collector to a Pharisee. He compared the prayer of someone who was uh, of God and, and, and someone who wasn't of God. And you might remember where the, uh, uh, the Pharisee, this self-righteous, he said, I thank you, God, that I, I am not like a tax collector, that I am not an adulterer, that I am not this or that. He came with his self-righteousness, lying to himself. Anybody remember that the heart is deceitful? Here, but in that same text, the tax collector, he couldn't even look up to heaven. The Bible says he beat on his chest and he said, have mercy on me. Say anybody out there in, 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 in virtuality understanding that uh, we are born and shaped in iniquity and it's only by God's grace and it's mercy that he allows us into his presence. Come on, somebody need to give him some praise right now. If the Lord held against us all the things that's in our heart, we haven't even talked about the things we did. We're just talking about the things we thought about doing. But the Bible says even if you think about committing adultery, you committed adultery. Oh, if, 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 if all my thoughts was placed on the wall or placed on a billboard for every life to see you all but fire me because uh, there's neither one of us. Now don't you cast a stone at me because the Bible says he without sin cast the first stone. And I saw you, I know you're with me, but we all are like the tax collector. Lord, I know you see all of my 
best. You see, all of the stuff in my heart, all of the filthiness in my heart, and all I can say is, have mercy. And that's in that text where the Lord said, who do you think found right? Who was justified? Declared right. And here, David, he's coming in humility and, and, and full self-awareness. He's not lying to himself. He, he understands his proclivity to sin. And, and he's like, Lord, it's in my heart. It's me. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And so he not only prays about his tongue and prays about his heart, he also prays about his companions. He prays about his company, uh, the company he keeps. Uh, they say, listen, uh, verse 5, let a righteous man strike me. That is, a, that is a kindness. Let him rebuke me. That is oil on my head. My head will not refuse it, for my prayer uh, will still be against the deeds of the evildoers. Here, he talks about his response to having godly people around him, righteous men and women around him. He says, listen, I'm, I'm willing to allow them to strike me. Now, please don't, don't understand the context. Going back to humil the humility of David, he's speaking as a king. Nobody come at the king, uh, uh, can I use the term crazy? You don't come at him disrespectful. You, don't, you, you, you can be stricken dead just by him uh, saying thumbs down and, and be taken out without a vote. And, but here in his humility, he doesn't allow his position to go to his head. He understands that though he holds a position of king uh, uh, before Israel, he's still a servant before God. Don't miss that. Don't let your position go to your head. You are a servant like all of us. And, and so he speaks of how uh, 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 I am humble enough to allow a righteous man to strike me. That is to rebuke me. Uh, he said that is all on my head and I will not refuse it. He's understanding the importance of authentic friendships. Uh, uh, he uses the word kindness, which in essence means loving kindness. Uh, it's that kindness that speaks of God's uh, perspective towards us, where he has loving kindness towards us. That is a constant love for us, unconditional mercy for us. That is, it doesn't matter what we do wrong, he always loves us. As if we never did wrong. Come on, you ought to shout about that. And here in the text, he says, I don't mind having friends like that. He's praying that he had friends like that. And he said, Lord, well, once you send them, I won't refuse them. Uh, he's understanding the, uh, the importance of accountability. Having people around him to make sure he continues to stay away from the evildoers, to make sure he doesn't eat of the delicacies from the evildoers. You all understand what I'm saying? In other words, you can't do right all by yourself. You need some people around you who's willing to tell you the truth, whether you are like it or not. This is what King David is stating here in the text. I love what Proverbs 27, 6 says. It says, the wounds of a friend are trustworthy, but the kisses of an enemy are excessive. And, and I know we all have gotten kisses from enemies, uh, like Judas kissed Jesus. Uh, they start speaking of how well and good you are in front of you, but then they stab you in the, in the back. Anybody know about those backstabbers? And, and here uh, he say, I really to hear the truth from people who, who, who really has the best for me. I, I love that. Anybody want anybody like that? I'm telling you, 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 you better cherish people like that. An uh, authentic friendship where you can tell one another anything and everything and not uh, be fearful of uh, it being held against you. Uh, and that's what you see here in the text. And I'm emphasizing this to make sure that we don't quarantine ourselves from authentic, godly friendships. Why? Because uh, uh, usually those whom we hang around is a reflection of who we are. 
Do you all get what I mean? David understands this, and he prays about his companions, the company he keeps. If you really want to tell the truth about yourself and see the truth about yourself, check out who you hang out with. He's talking about this as it relates to his prayer life. This is all still connected, guess what, to his prayer life. He so, so much into God helping him. He says, listen, I'm willing for you, Lord, to deal with my tongue, not only my tongue, but deal with my heart, not only my heart, but deal with my companions. Because you all know, birds of a feather flock together. And so we don't want to be around bad company because the bad company will pull us away. That's why he says in verse 4, do not let my heart be drawn to what is evil so that I take part in the wicked deeds along with those who are evildoers. He understands that he's weak in and of himself to say no to them. He says in verse uh, 6, the, uh, their rulers will be thrown down from cliffs and, and the wicked will learn that my words are well spoken. In other words, he says their end is destruction. I'm not trying to go that way. And so can I just say a hard truth to you? Yeah, I know this is hard, but some of you all look at it. He said, if you notice that certain people are going in the same direction you're going, Cut them off. Cut them off. If, if they're going in the opposite direction of you, you're not trying to hurt them. You're not trying to be uh, self-righteous or arrogant towards them. No, 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 no. You understand that if 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 you are if you're not influencing them to go your way, they are influencing you to go their way. David understands this, and he says, don't, don't let me be pulled away by them. And so he goes a little further, and he says, listen, I, 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 look at verse 8, 9, and 10. Let's start with verse 8. He says, but my eyes are fixed on you. Sovereign Lord, in you I take refuge. I, I do not give uh, 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 do not give me over to death. Uh, keep me safe from the traps set by the evildoers, from the snares they have laid uh, for me. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass by in safety. See, David understands this. That when you begin to hang out with evildoers, after a while, it'll catch up with you. You reap what you sow. The very guys or persons that you have spent your time with and you know that they are not going in a direction that, that they should be going, they will eventually let you down. They will eventually hurt you. Why? Because you are selling your integrity for a temporary acceptance. Don't let the devil sell you out like that. God says, listen, I died for you and have risen from the grave for you. I have made it possible for you to come into my very presence in the Holy of Holies. There's so much more for you if you say yes to me and no to the enemy. David says, I, I fix my eyes on you, O sovereign God. He understands that he has all authority. Although he's the king, David is the king, he understands that God is the king of all kings. And, and so he says, look, I, 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 I'm, I'm focusing straight on you. In the midst of this stressful scenario, understand where I'm going in this. He's saying in the midst of stress and a time of testing, I'm fixing my eyes on you. The proof is in the pudding of whether or not you love God, in other words. And it's only in the time of testing that you can truly show God that I mean everything I said to you. That I love you, that I adore you, and I desire for you to hear me in my prayer. Because it's still connected with prayer. And here in the text, he, he's, he's, he's bringing out his total devotion to him. And, and he said, I fix my eyes on you, and I take refuge in you. 
You see that? I'm fixing my eyes on you. Can you not know, picture that in your mind's eye? In other words, he said, listen, I gaze at you while I just glance at my problems. Do you hear what I'm saying? He see, he notices his enemies, but he's not focusing on his enemies. He's, he's fixing his eyes on him. He's aware of what's going on around him. He's even aware of what's going on on the inside of him. But he understands who's Lord over all of us. And he says, I fix my eyes on you, sovereign Lord. And I, I pray that you keep me safe, even though my enemies have nothing but the worst from me. I, I believe you, oh God, to fight all of my battles and, and to keep me in the midst of this hostile environment, in the midst of this coronavirus, in the midst of this racial tension, in the midst of all of this violence that's going on around me. I'm fixing my eyes on you. It reminds me of a story, if I remember, in, in Matthew, I believe, Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33, where uh, it's, it's, it's Peter who's out there in the middle of the storm. Anybody, you all know this story. Uh, the fisherman was out there in the middle of the storm, and, uh, and, and as they was in the fourth watch, I believe, that is about three or so in the morning, uh, it was night outside, it was dark outside, the winds and the waves was coming at them, and here they see Jesus walking on top of what was causing them much fear. You all remember what, what Peter says, Lord, bid me to come out there to you. And Jesus, while he's standing on top of these stormy waters, he says, come. If I remember the story, Peter, he steps down out of the boat and he begins to walk on water. Can you believe it? He walk, he's walking on the very thing that caused him much fear. In the midst of what's caused so much fear, he calls on the Lord, bid me to come out there with you, which I highly commend, Peter, here. I said, this is powerful, because I never would have done that. I probably would have just stayed on the boat and said, Lord, get on the boat, that way we know we won't sink. But here, Peter, I love his risk-taking type attitude. He, he, he asked for the Lord to, to, to allow him to come out there, and, and, and here God says, come on out here and stand on top of the water with me. Stand over your problems along with me. Stand over your hostile environment with me. And so he walks out there and the Bible says as he began to walk he noticed the winds and the waves uh, coming at him. And fear came upon him. And he began to sink. I mean, you know, let's just stop right there. He didn't begin to sink until he took his eyes off Jesus. When he began to what? He began to gaze and fix his eyes on the problems and glance at Jesus rather than gazing and fixing his eyes on Jesus and just take a glance at the ways. And because he focused on all the problems and what's going on around him, it caused him to sink. And I, and I believe that as he was walking towards Jesus, he got distracted with all of the stuff that was going on on around him that caused him to lose his faith. I can see him walking towards him and he started having some level of victory. But then he, he allowed the enemy to get into his ear. He allowed his fear to overcome him. And if I remember what happened, this is the good news of the text, that despite his shortcomings, the Bible says, he said, help! <laughs> Hallelujah! He called on God in the midst of his trouble and the Bible says, y'all got to see it, immediately, the Lord didn't wait, immediately he reached out his hand and caught him. In other words, it was like Jesus had to go after him. I believe that's what happened in the text. It wasn't the fact that he just so happened to see him and he said, oh, come on, pull you up. No, no, no. I believe that the Lord went after him, reached down where he was and brought him up to where he was standing again on top that's a word for somebody right now. Don't you dare take your eyes off Jesus. You stay fixed on him. Don't get caught up on what they're saying in the news. Don't get caught up on what they're saying in the White House. Don't get caught up on what's going on all around you. All the violence, all the killings, all the, all the death and, and the sickness. I dare you to keep your eyes on him. And the Lord will reach down 
God holds you up and you'll find yourself walking on top of the very thing that once caused you fear. Is there anybody that believes that? Come on, give God some praise. I believe that prayer works and he's able to keep you. Come on, look to the hills for which comes our help. Our help comes from the Lord. Don't get distracted. And watch when God show up and show out. Come on, bless the Lord if you believe that. Oh God, how we thank you for your word. We thank you for how you have already spoken in song. Thank you for how you have already spoken even in word. I pray right now that it will penetrate the hearts of your people. Not only those who are members of Bread of Life, all the, also those who may not be, but whoever is listening to this service, I pray that they do not walk away the same way they came in. I pray right now in the name of Jesus for those who may be dealing with sickness right now, those who may be dealing with coronavirus right now, Lord, those who may be dealing with fear and violence. We are concerned about what's going on in our city amongst our people, and it's not the quote-unquote white police officer that's killing our children. It is our own children killing our own people that's causing fear in our hearts and causing us to say, what can I do, Lord? I pray that you help us to know that you are able, that you can change things depending upon your people fixing their eyes on you. Lord, I pray that you, oh God, will not only uh, 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 encourage our hearts and minds and deliver us in the midst of our own trials and tribulations that's going on on the outside of us, dealing with our enemies that's surrounding us, but even dealing with our own proclivities, our inclinations to sin. Lord, even in the midst of all that, oh God, I pray that you, oh God, will reveal yourself in such a way that we will say nobody but Jesus did this in our lives. We thank you already, oh God. We lift up all those who are dealing with various trials and tribulations, the enemy coming at us unaware, uh, that invisible enemy, Lord, that's attacking our families, coming at our marriages, coming at our health, oh God, causing us to be sleepless at night, to, to suffer from insomnia, to deal dealing with depression and all types of other ailments, and we looking for other things, even delicacies from the evildoers, oh God, to try to somehow get us through this. I pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you will encourage your people to know that you are still on the throne. You saw all that was going to happen before it happened. Lord, you even ordained these days before we even saw it, before the very foundations of the world. So therefore, we trust in you and have the audacity to thank you ahead of time, to give you praise in the, even in the midst of the battle, knowing that, uh, that we trust in you and keep our eyes on you. You are able to, to lift us up from the, the, the trials and tribulations, the waves and, and the winds that come at us, oh Lord, that you, oh God, will strengthen us if we have faith. You ask Peter, why did you doubt? Where is your faith? Lord, we trust you right now. You said we had the faith the size of a mustard seed. We've been able to move mountains. So right now, we're dealing with some mountainous situations, oh God. We're dealing with some things that's totally out of our uh, control. We, we can't control the end of our Ourselves, Lord, but we know that you're able. You're able to bring peace in the land. You're able to keep us even now in the midst of all of this violence. Lord, you're able to even start a revival right here in the city of Chicago and we'll be seen as an example of what to do because of people of a faith, of faith in you, fixing our eyes on you and you, oh God, lifting us up, dusting us off, and using us as examples to your glory. Lord, you're able to do that. And that's what we pray. And we have the audacity to thank you ahead of time. So we lift up every prayer request. We lift up every trial and tribulation that someone is going through. We lift up every 
every uh, person that's going through some type of opposition from the enemy, whether physical, uh, it's all really spiritual. Lord, I pray, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against them will prosper. That's our prayer. And Lord, if there's someone who don't know you, I pray right now that they will come to know you. That they will acknowledge you as their Lord and Savior. Savior from their sins. To acknowledge you, O oh God, as a person who died so that we can live. To ask you to come into their hearts and to transform their lives. And they can pray like David. Lord, help me. And Lord, we know you will show up for them just like you showed up for King David. We thank you already. In the name of Jesus, let all God's people say, amen, amen. Come on, give God some praise if you believe that God is in the midst of this time, in the midst of our worship experience, in the midst of our prayer. And I believe this verse wholeheartedly. You all hear it over and over again. And I, 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 get, I never get tired of saying it, where the Bible says, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and what? Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, forgive them of their sins, and heal the land. Don't you all stop praying. Believe God, and we know that he will answer our prayer. Can I just say amen? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to thank God for the privilege of being able to continue to remember the Lord in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. I think this is the third time that we have virtual uh, communion. Um, I think in April, and then May, June, really this is the fourth time. And so um, time is flying. And it's truly amazing how God has steadily been keeping us even in four months. We bless the Lord. And it really reminds me of how God is such a powerful God that it doesn't matter what may come our way, God always preserves his movement his people, his church. And even as it relates to the death of Jesus Christ, there were some who gave up, many, even his own disciples. But here Jesus comes again to show that at the very time of our weakness, at the very time of us giving up, God shows up and shows his power to us. So may we continue to endure. We don't know all the answers to what's going to happen as a result of the coronavirus. But one thing we will continue to do is to uplift the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ that even in the hardest times, God's church will prevail. Let us look to the Lord and pray. Oh God, we thank you how we love you. Thank you, oh God, once again for what you have shown to us. The greatest miracle known to humanity, and that is you raising yourself from the dead. And you commanded us to remember you in your death, burial, and resurrection by the eating and drinking of bread and wine. So we ask right now that you would sanctify it as each and every person is watching from their households and as they have their own bread 
they don't have their own cup. Lord, sanctify it. Lord, we pray that you remove anything that is not of you from us. Lord, we pray that you restore us back to you if we have any sins, if there's anything uh, that we have towards uh, one another. Lord, may you remove it so that we do not drink judgment upon ourselves because of contempt towards the bread and the cup. Thank you, Lord, once again. I'm going to ask you to give all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. All God's people say amen. And Paul says, That which I received from the Lord, from the Lord, I deliver also unto you. That in the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread and said, Break and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he also took the cup, saying, His cup. It's the New Testament of my blood. This drink ye in remembrance of me. For as often as you hear this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes again. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood that never loses its power. And before I give a benediction, I want to um, um, emphasize that this Wednesday, on uh, July 8th, we will have a soft opening, a partial opening of the sanctuary uh, for prayer and Bible study. We'll have prayer from 6.30 to uh, 7, and then Bible study from 7 to 8. We emphasize that you bring mass if you just happen to come. If you do not want to come and stay home, that's fine. We will continue to have uh, Bible study on Facebook Live as well as a phone conference. We just want to give an opportunity for those who desire to come back to the place of familiarity, a place where they were baptized, where they rededicated their lives to Christ, a place where they have a history of being with God just for the purposes of strength and encouragement. If you desire to come, please come and make sure that you obey the laws of this land as it relates to safety in this building and we look forward to having prayer and bible study wherever you are whether here or in your home and god can you all just give god some praise and just thank him for the privilege of being able to serve him wherever you are let us receive the benediction oh god we thank you once again for this time we thank you for your word we thank you for the redemptive work of jesus christ we thank you, O oh God, for keeping us all the way, even through this pandemic. And though we don't know the end, we know in the end we will win. So therefore, we won't wait till the battle is over. We shout even now, because we know in the end we're going to be on top of this situation and not on the bottom. In your mighty name we pray, in Jesus' name, that all God's people say, amen, amen. Amen. Now enjoy some of the worship songs from our praise team. Amen. <laughs>